Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris from the YouTube channel Third Coast Craftsman and in this video I'm going to be building this really cool grill island for my 12 by 12 deck section here. Now the grill's not actually in the island because most of these standalone grills they don't recommend that you enclose them in the built-ins and these are a lot cheaper than the actual built-in grills that you can use and because it's on a wooden deck and I'm not using full masonry fireproofing that completely is a lot more extra work so we're just going to leave it separate over here it fits the space really nice I have a nice outdoor fridge here and I have some nice stonework tiling on these two faces a nice tile here a butcher block bar top over here with some seating and this nice pergola over top so let's get started building the frame and getting started on this project so I want to show you real quick the framing layout that I'm going to do here. I started with figuring out the fridge dimensions. So I have the inside dimensions here. I gave myself a half of an inch on each side of the fridge uh, and a half an inch on the top so that it'll squeeze in there. And to the left, I have my opening that I figured out for my standard trash can. That's giving me a 12 and a half inch by 22 and a half inch opening. Uh, that'll be for the plywood box that I will build to put the trash can in. The tops of the frames are made of 2x6s and the rest of the frames are 2x4s. I did this to give me an overhang on the top that will act as a drip edge and that ended up working out really nicely. Now knowing the inside measurements of the outdoor fridge, it made it really easy for me to figure out how long to cut each board and I was able to cut them all out at once. Now I used a miter saw which makes things fast and easy, but you can also just use a circular saw and speed square. So a couple goals in this project was that I wanted to make something that was really nice to add enjoyment and value to our outdoor space but not to make it too complicated so that anyone with some basic tools can make something like this too. I wanted to make it safe by not including the grill in an enclosed area, and I wanted to make something that can go on a deck or a patio. Brick pavers, which you often see on patios, would be too heavy for most decks, and then I also wanted to make it relatively affordable to build. Then once I have all my pieces cut, I can simply screw them all together to make the frame. On the back of the island, I built the frame with the stud 16 inches on center and I'll just be attaching tongue and groove boards to that on that outside face. Then I put the fridge in its spot to determine how wide I need to make the end frames. I build those and then screw the whole thing together. All right, so what I did was I added another frame member over here to match this side, and they're offset one inch from the inside of this drawer opening. And what I'm gonna do is take my half inch plywood, rip down a couple strips of those, laminate those together, which will give me a thickness of one inch, which will mount perfectly to the inside edge of this. Then I can install my drawer slides to those and build my drawer box for the trash can and get that fitted nice. I'm going to add two more two by sixes to the top to give it a nice rigid base for the tile that's going to be going on there. And then we're just going to be sheathing and putting plywood and cement board and our tongue and groove all over this thing and really get moving along. So let's get started with that. I'm going to be putting a natural stone tile on the front and near side and then regular porcelain tiles on the top. And in order to attach those tiles, I first need to create a nice sturdy base. The front I know has plenty of strength with all those 2x4s that are close together, but on the sides and the top I'm going to be adding a layer of half inch plywood over those studs. Then I'm going to secure the pergola post to the frame and then I'll add a sheet material called hardy backer between those posts on the side and on the front and anywhere that the tile gets attached. The hardy backer is a cement board and you need to put that down before applying mortar and tile. I'll be painting any exposed wood with Valspar's solid deck and patio stain. This will protect all the wood from the harsh exterior elements. 
You'll use a carbide tip scoring knife to score a line in the cement board and then you can bend it either towards you or away from you to make a break along your line, very similar to drywall. The hardy backer gets screwed every eight inches using special cement board screws, but because the cement board is kind of brittle, you need to stay about one and a half inches away from the corners and the edges. I used the recommended cement board screws for all the bigger panels, but they will break thinner strips that I need to use along the edge. And so I'm gonna use some high quality multi-material construction adhesive and some galvanized roofing nails to attach those thinner strips. To cut the inside corners on cement boards, score an additional diagonal line, support the edges with scrap wood, and then break away the waste with a hammer. And you can clean it up with a diamond tile file. Now before I add the tiles, I'm actually going to use some tongue and groove boards and enclose the back and far side. To me, it didn't make sense to spend all that extra time, labor, and money to put tile all the way around, especially since those sides are very rarely seen. So using the tongue and groove, it'll save me some money and it still really looks nice. All right, so now it's time to lay out and start cutting the tiles for the top. And there's a lot of different ways to cut tiles. Some are gonna be a lot easier. Some work better for curved angles or corners. But what I'm mainly gonna be using is the tile saw that you see back there. I have a lot of future tile projects, so I invested in a nice tile saw. I also have a nice tile cutter here, and this scores a line and then breaks it. Great for straight edges, can't really do corners or anything like that. Now you can use an angle grinder with a diamond blade, or they even make diamond blades for jigsaws, they make nippers, there's all sorts of different ways to cut tiles. So depending on your project, if you're just doing this, you might only need to invest in some nippers. If you have an angle grinder, you can use that. Again, there's a lot of dust, so you wanna wear respirator, eye protection, and ear protection. So let's get started cutting some tile. Now because of some of the larger tiling projects I have coming up, I invested in one of these more expensive and larger tile saws. But Lowe's also sells lots of really nice smaller saws and tile cutters that work perfect for a job like this and all sorts of other applications around the home. I laid out and cut all my tiles to fit the top and now I can mix up my thinset mortar. The folks at Lowe's will be able to match you up with the right type of mortar and grout for the tiles you wanna use. And I'll mix up my mortar to a consistency of peanut butter and spread it out on the cement board with a quarter inch notch trowel doing only small sections at a time.
After my mortar has dried, I can then begin grouting the top. I again mix the grout to a peanut butter like consistency and use a special rubber grout float to press the grout into all those joints. And then I can use that float to pull away the excess going at a 45 degree angle to the joints. Again, I'm working in small sections and I'll finish up by using a damp sponge and again, pulling it away at a 45 degree angle to clean up all that excess grout material. Next, I'm gonna work on the boards that will make up the pergola. Now I'm making this pergola asymmetrical to cover the island and the bar top section, but the grill manufacturer doesn't recommend putting anything above the grill, so I'm gonna leave that end short. I just use my jigsaw to cut out a nice curve on all the pieces, and then I'll get them painted. All right, so I have all my frame members for the pergola. They're painted and they're drying right now, and so I'm gonna start working on the stone and grout over here. I'm gonna seal everything with this grout and stone sealer. Stone and grout is very porous and it's a really good idea to seal that. And then I'm gonna take this big Baltic birch butcher block countertop, I'm gonna cut it a little more narrow and mount it over here with these big shelf brackets for the nice little bar top area where we have the two seats. And then I will work on finishing the doors and the drawer for the trash can to slide in and out on and we're getting really close to being done with this thing. It's looking great, let's continue on. When this sealer dries, the stones don't look wet anymore, but there are some products out there that you can apply that will keep the stones in that darker wet look, which I might end up doing because I think it looked really nice when they were wet. Next, I can install all my boards to make up the pergola. I first will screw the support boards to the post and then I can toenail screw all my cross members to those support boards. Now I'm going to take the butcher block countertop and cut it down a little more narrow using a circular saw and a scrap board as a straight edge guide. Then I'll cut two notches in the bar top that are going to go around the post and I'm going to use a pull saw to cut to my outer lines as those pull saws are super accurate and they don't tear the wood. Then I'll use a jigsaw to make several cuts to make the waste removal super easy with a chisel. I really thought the natural wood color of this bar top would contrast super nicely with everything else. And so to preserve the wood, I'm going to apply several coats of spar urethane. Spar urethane is great for outdoor projects as it seals the wood and it has UV blockers, which will help preserve the color of the wood. And every few years, you can also sand the top and apply additional coats. Now the last thing I need to do is make a drawer for the trash can and a cabinet door. The drawer needs to be one inch narrower than the opening to fit the drawer slides and I make the doors out of leftover tongue and groove boards. During this build process, I had an electrician come in and install a nice exterior grade outlet on one of the deck posts that's behind the island. I can use that to plug the fridge in and also something like a nice string of patio lights up on top of that pergola. You may notice that this fridge is different than what I originally started with. Well, that's because I started this project before my actual outdoor grade fridge came in. I had another mini fridge that was actually the same size, and so I was able to use that for my layout. Now, outdoor fridges have way better weatherproofing, insulation, they have better electronics and a cooling system that is able to handle the more extreme outdoor conditions. Indoor fridges are meant to operate in climates around 60 to 80 degrees, and they're not designed to be able to handle 100 degree temperatures on one day and rain on the next. So most outdoor fridges are significantly more expensive, but I found this really nice Danby one from Lowe's that was still really affordable and looked great too. The materials to build this grill island cost me right around $1,200, and that doesn't include the grill, the outdoor fridge, or any of the tools. Well, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project and learned something, and I hope you get out and make a nice grill island for your outdoor space as well. We'll see you on the next one.